Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is that time of week where we have a guest join us. Check him out on the Volume Network. What half of Jenkins and Jones, the homie Dragonfly Jones? What's going on? One third. Sh- sh- one third. Shouts to the homie Mike. Don't leave. Don't leave the white boy my out. Bad, um, my bad. You know, I know this is a. <laughs> I know we're going to war against white boys this week, you know, courtesy of Rose, but 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 Mike's one of the good ones. But I appreciate you, my boy. Always good to hop on. Yeah, with you, nah, man. nah, my bad on that. You 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 a magnanimous <laughs> sort, because like in theory that would be like Sean is one half of this, and I'm not saying that shit not one time. <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? What can I say? I say, though, we're going to talk about the play-in games. We're going to talk about what's going on uh, with the rapidly rap. But you came on with the uh, White Sox hat on. And I was thinking about this the other day. All the changes. Everybody be out here making the uniforms. The White Sox are never going to change those uniforms, are they? They stumbled upon and they greatness, shouldn't. and they are never leaving. They shouldn't, bro. Like, you know, I, I'm in love with the White Sox hat because I was a kid who grew up in the 90s and all my favorite rappers wore that shit, right? Like, you yes. know, simplicity is best. Like, you know, the New York Yankees hat, you know, it's simple as hell. The, the White Sox hat, simple as hell. And, you know, yeah, I, I wore this shit. Be, I, I, I copped this shit because, like I said, I grew up a kid in the 90s who had a, who had one of these just because my favorite rappers were wearing it, like Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. And, uh, you know, it was real heavy with the West Coast rappers, you know? Yes. It was the one that came out. I remember, I, th- I want to say it's 91 when they first started wearing that model, like that whole get up, right? They went to the white and the white and black and the pinstripes because they used to be the red, white, and blue, right? The laziest thing a team can right. do where they just right, going right. to be like, yeah, America, that's what we're going to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they went to this. And I wonder, like, did Jerry Reinsdorf realize, hey, man, the, the, the blacks are going to love it. Watch. Watch. <laughs> yeah it 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 hit like bro it hit like a meteor like we fell in love with this simple ass you know 1918 ass hat you know what i'm saying because like i said our favorite rappers were wearing it (laughs) yes it it, it was also it was very it was a it was a very good line of gear in an era of well quite honestly america was learning a bit more about gang banging and people needed something Mm -hmm. that everybody could wear right everybody could get down with the white Sox hat yeah, yeah. And and like I said, you know, simplistic, black and white goes with everything. You got to remember the 90s were a very dark uh, time, you yes. know, chromatically as far as fashion went as well. We weren't yes. wearing, wearing really a lot of black, dark, you know, bright colors and shit. So, yeah, you know, this this shoeless Joe Jackson ass shit popped off with us little young black kids <laughs> for whatever reason. Look. NWA messed the game up when you think about this, right? Because they came out on some L.A. stuff. You probably need to be wearing all black not to offend nobody, right? And then they were wearing all the Raiders and the King stuff. And then you're right. We were all wearing all black all the time, even though it was hot outside. And then cross colors came around. And they was like, yo, why don't we turn this shit all the way up, right? Like, we just couldn't find no middle ground. Yeah, yeah. Cross cross colors came with some heat though. Like I remember um the air raids dropped with the little Kente cloth design on them too in the early nineties. Yes. Had a pair of those, loved them. So yeah, yeah. It th- that's kind of where, where we were in the nineties. It was like you were either like, you know, popping with a bunch of colors or you were just like straight monochromatic all black with it. You know, so there was like no middle ground. Yeah. All right. I want to ask you from the play in games. You want to start with the Lakers and the Pelicans, or you want to go to what seemed like the end of the Warriors? Well, I like to save my dessert for last, and I'm very much enjoying the, the, the demise of the Warriors. So let's let, let's Woo! go to Lakers Pelicans first. Let's eat our vegetables first. You feel me? Yes, let's do that. Right, we will save the laughs for later. I I found Lakers Pelicans to be so sad. It really made me feel bad in the course of watching it. Not because the Lakers won. I don't really have a problem with the mm-hmm. Lakers winning. After all, the play-in tournament is the LeBron James Invitational. Right, it is there for him right. to Undefeated, get some more games on television. I mean, I'm just saying he is he been he been the the the, the constant between these things. He the host of the play in tournament. Sometimes they take it on mm-hmm. the road, but they ought to have him give a speech before every play in tournament and thank everybody for showing up. I thought this was a terrible idea when they got it started, but I love this shit so much I come back every year. He treat that like I treat summer league. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, yo, right. man, that I, one I, year I mean, he I missed mean, it. 
Yeah, shit, shit even worked out serendipitously for him where he got to dot Steph's eye from three to advance. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the basketball gods smiled on him with that shit. You know? So, yeah. It, yeah, it's for sure the LeBron Invitational. 3-0 and in it. Like, he's never needed it because he's always been like a top eight seed when, whenever he's been in it. But, you know, he goes out there and he, and he balls out. Um, Didn't necessarily have a really great game shooting-wise last night, but it was still one of those games where it's like, yeah, he was, what, 6 for 20, I think. But he still, like, controlled so much of it. And, and you just saw, like... Yeah. You know, the, the basketball robot, the basketball, great basketball mind that he is. And, and you know, just just something to appreciate. Like, I know we, we do the whole, hey, let's not take this 39 year old for granted. But seriously, let's not. Like, since the All-Star break, he has been on a fucking heater, right? Is this, I think he's averaging 27, um, 7 and 10 on like 54% shooting. Just unreal, bro. And he's turning 40 in like five months. Come on, man. Yeah, I, I think I may not told you, but I went uh, when the Lakers played at Barclays. The friends of mine came to town. I went and checked it out. And I'm not sure the last time I'd been in the building for a LeBron game. And that's the one where you hit like nine threes or something crazy like that. And yeah. it could be very easy to think of LeBron as a theoretical idea. Cause I'm on record. He's the old man at the club and I do wish he would go home. I'm not saying that he's not allowed to stay at the club. I'm not saying he can't dance. Mm-hmm. He's dancing very well. He seems to still know all the steps, man. I'm just kind of tired of him being at the club. I readily acknowledge that. But when you in there and you realize he's still running this motherfucker, man, everybody on every, like as it started building and the whole arena now becomes LeBron James fans and you there and you see people wear four or five different versions of LeBron jerseys, none of them heat jerseys, neither here nor there. But you see all of that and you are reminded like the magnitude of that dude is still ginormous, right? And so we get this game last night. I give this to the Lakers and I think this part's easy to forget at times. Once you get to the playoffs, they still, as far as who are your two best players, it still ain't a lot of people that's topping their two best players, period. Right. right, especially if LeBron right. starts rounding into like something close to LeBron playoff shape. How many teams really got a better? Our two guys at the top are definitely better than the Lakers. Two guys at the top. It ain't many. Like take Milwaukee for example. Right now with Giannis and Dame, I can't say that about them. Just picking them as an example. Nope. I can't say that about Boston. Just picking them as examples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm totally with you, which is why I didn't understand the whole. You know, there's a whole discussion. Should the Lakers try to, you know, get OKC or should they just try to go to Denver? And I'm like, bro, go through Denver right now. Right. Like LeBron has been playing the best basketball of his season since all star break. You've got a healthy AD. And like you said, when those two are on their shit, I, th- they look like the best duo in the league to me. Like, you know, Jamal Murray just came out um, earlier this week and like, you know, me and Jokic are the best two in the league. And I have no arguments with that. I feel like we we kind of sleep on that during the regular season because Jamal Murray is a guy who kind of get, gets lost in the mix because, you know, he doesn't get the all star selections, the all star, the, the all NBA selections, because it's just an incredible fucking golden age for guards right now. But, you know, playoff time comes around. We're reminded that, yes. That is possibly the best two on the league. But like you said, bro, when Bron and AD are on their shit, I don't know if anyone is better than those two. Poor Anthony Davis, man. Like I was before I came in here, I had the TV on the ESPN and they were talking about something to the effect of Anthony, something about Anthony Davis and the Nuggets. And I felt like the conversation was centered around the need for Anthony Davis to step up against Jokic. And I'm like, guys, I don't know if you guys remember what happened last year. Anthony Davis stepped up all the way up he could not have possibly played better against Jokic and it did and still not good. matter and at all like you're good. right their best you're chance right. to beat Denver's right now but I ain't no I just you know I ain't nobody beating them as far as I'm concerned oh yeah oh yeah I, you know I want to be clear I'm not at all saying that the Lakers are going to pull this off I I just <laughs> think that the whole trying to uh, try to avoid Denver is is a fool's Aaron like you're going to depend yes. on fucking you know OKC or Minnesota to knock Denver off that's not happening bro like and, and you know Bron <laughs> is at the he's he's 39 years old right now he's going to be 40 come next season bro go ahead if you're going to have to go through Denver sooner or later you're not going to get to the Western Conference Finals and Denver is not going to be there right so go ahead and, and get this shit out the way if if, if you don't have enough to, to be Denver Never fine. You, you you got a longer off season than, than you would have had before. Like it works out for, best for everybody here. No, the, all the ideas every time it comes up when a team is trying to jockey to get playoff position, I spy busters. Every mm-hmm. busters as far as the eye can see. I'm sorry, and I get it. Everything else, I'm not. I don't watch sports for smart. That's not why I'm here. Go say we going to beat whoever come out in front of us. That, I mean, that's honestly how I look at it every time somebody want to play that game. And I appreciate it. The Lakers, because look, 
Oklahoma City is definitely a better look for them, right? They would, I, I 100% would understand oh, yeah. why they would rather they play win. them. I, I, yeah, I would for sure take LA over <laughs> Oklahoma City in that series. No question. Yo, I got to say, man, people said that early in the year, earlier, and I felt like they were saying it definitively, and I thought that it was crazy talk, but they just so lightened the keister that I don't really, un, I don't, Anthony Davis could really eat against them unless you think that Chet is ready to make a super leap right now, which is just a lot to ask yeah. out of anybody. Yeah, a, a lot to ask. And he's had an incredible rookie season, but they had OKC's number all season. Like, you know, the, 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 the times they matched up, like, you know, L.A. B- took those boys to the woodshed. So, I, yeah, I, I, I for sure think that they would have beat OKC. But I want to circle back to what you said, man, about how, how you know, you're ready for, for Bron to go home. I thought there was supposed to be some old man unity here, dog. Like, 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 like what's your beef for Bron, bro? Nah, it's no beef. It's just it's the same way I feel about rap. The top dudes is not supposed to be around this long, right? Like there's supposed to be a Mm. cycling and a rotation. And then we bring in new blood. I've seen this movie. I don't think he's going to win another championship, right? Like, I don't think we're going to get anything else that takes us to these highs. 2020 was his Tiger Woods and the Masters a couple years ago type of thing, right? Like he got his last trip to the mountaintop. He won it with three teams. I'm just ready to go do other stuff because quite honestly, the longer he sticks around, the more he says stuff that really gets on my goddamn nerves. Did you see the thing that he said about the defensive player of the year? Did you see that? About how he should have won it in 2013? Well, no, no. He said that he should have won it in 2012, right? 2012. If I'm not mistaken. Because his argument was... Okay, his argument was just all around, to me, all over the place. First of all, the idea that you should win Defensive Player of the Year just because you won everything else. Should you get Sixth Man of the Year too, LeBron? Should we also give you the most improved player? So just because you won a bunch of these, you should be supposed to give you that when it's a bad argument for Beyonce, it's a bad argument for him. The year that I thought that he could make the argument was 2013 when Marcus Gasol won it because yes. I did think Lamar that LeBron Gasol, Jay, yeah. he was the best player yeah. in the NBA. But in 2012... It wasn't him who got robbed because his point was the guy who won it didn't make first team um, all defense. Was, it was, That's it was because Chandler, Tyson right? Chandler won, won it. Yeah. yeah. Dwight made first team all defense. It was the year Dwight got hurt and the year that everybody was mad at Dwight for the thing that happened with Stan. Dwight's the one that got robbed in that case, right? But nah, man. Tim Duncan, probably the best defensive player of the last 30 years yeah. never won defensive player of the year and he's a big yeah. man and that's an award they give to big men nah bro you just didn't win it sorry it happens yeah yeah and and duncan had like some three block per game seasons and shit where, where we knew he was the like best defender the best rim protector in the league never won that shit also think scotty got a raw deal i, I think scotty should have had at least one under his belt too um but, but 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 you know i see the argument but it's a big man award like you go look at, especially yeah. at that time it's big men and big men michael jordan and gary payton but basically that whole time like oh you, you was better than olajuwon you know what i'm saying like no nah, that's you're not you're yeah. not gonna get that yeah, but like you said, yes, it, it is a rim protector award. But 96, when Gary Payton won it, what we had three fucking all first team all defense uh, uh, selections with, with that bull squad with fucking, you know, MJ, Pip, and yeah. Robin, right? I think for sure Pip, Pip should have had one on his on his resume. He's one of the greatest perimeter defenders of all time. But like you said, it's a big man award. You know, it is biased towards rim, um, rim protectors. But I still think Scotty oh. got a raw deal. I do think Bron got a raw deal. I think Bron should be in the in, in, in the Bron Akeem Giannis club. He should have an MVP and a defensive player of the year on his resume, like with 2013 for yeah. sure. First of all, I would say I wish Scotty had gotten a defensive player of the year award. I really, really do. One less thing for him to talk about, right? Like, like maybe, maybe, <laughs> One maybe. Less thing from the hell, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that would soothe him, right? Like, I bet Jordan sometimes just wish. Fine, you want, you want, you can. I got one at the crib. I won't even. I, in fact, I don't even know where that motherfucker is. Let me go dig it up out of these boxes, and then you can have defensive player of the year, Scotty. See how much it means, right? <laughs> that that that's what he in would the box do with the old Jet magazines. Yeah, yeah. But no, I do think that there was a point, and this is like the height of LeBron James, is that you were the best offensive and the best defensive player in the league, right? I get it. Mm. But it is not some great travesty that you did not get it. And the argument of, because I got everything else, is stupid. And he wouldn't be saying stupid stuff like this if he would go away. That's all I'm saying. If The, the sooner he goes, we ain't got to hear him talk these things and trying to build... The, 
I think he's trying to build the I'm better than Mike case and he thinks he's going to logic his way through it. And unfortunately, sir, it's not, you're not going to take this to a court, right? You're not going to present a case. Mm -hmm. You're not going to run it through an algorithm. We've all decided wherever we're going to be, we're there. there. There's nobody left to sway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think after 2016, your mind was made up on Brian, right? Like, because, you know, that's that was the moment that swayed me on. This is the best basketball player I've ever seen. And to me, he's only like strength in that case. Like, I know the whole greatest argument about, you know, MJ had, you know, six and eight years and all that. But like when it comes to just flat out playing basketball, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone better than LeBron. Like I said, he's 39 years old since all star break. He's been averaging 28 on 54 percent shooting. Like, I don't know if I've just ever seen anyone who's just flat out better at playing basketball than LeBron James, bro. I, I, I could understand why somebody would say that. J.J. Barea would never have shut Michael Jordan down. <laughs> uh, and that's the end of the yeah, discussion. Look, for, he, for here, look, that's look. That. it's kind of hard to beat. It's kind of hard to beat. It's kind of tough. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Two, 2011 is, is, is indefensible. There is no yep. excuse you can lay out on the table for those 2011 finals, right? And I get that if you say that, you know, there's no playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I, if, if you say there's there's no um there's no playoff series that you can say you know mike laid an egg like that completely one million percent agree but i feel like yeah you know mj went and had a 2011 finals i also don't know if mj could have had a 2016 finals you know so uh, like i said like like 2016 put, that shift is shift for me bro i can see that uh jordan put up 43 a game against the Suns in 93 let us yes, not forget that Suns, is yes. that's yes, that's yes. pretty close that's he pretty did. close that's he pretty did. close but he we did. don't want to do that we don't want to do that we don't want to do that and he needed every single one of those points because all those games came down to like four or six points, you know, spread there. Yes, so. they did. They needed yeah, also, yeah. he needed he all did. those points because he needed all those points because Scotty and Horace are a little bit scary. Yeah. 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 And he also did those in the Jordan 8s. And if you ever won the Jordan 8s, that motherfucker, MJ put up 41 per game in the finals and some Tims, bro, and some construction boots. Like, that is the most amazing <laughs> thing about that shit to me. <laughs> Someone who, has, who owns a couple <laughs> pair of Jordan 8s. How did you, I wear those every time. I'm like, how the fuck did MJ put up 41 in the finals in these, bro? These are cinder blocks. No, that whole run of Jays before the tens all raised the question. So you was really like playing ball in these. Like maybe the, the threes, right. not so much. Hooping at some fours, madness. Hoop fours and fives, no. madness to me. Yes. Like I wear my fours when I know I'm not going to be walking a lot. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Those <laughs> motherfuckers have like all the arch support of some church shoes, bro. Like I do not know how this was the best basketball player in the world with that technology on his feet. It's insane. <laughs> Hooping at some woods. Like that at the time, I think they was the future. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, bro, he wore the ones in 98 when he went back to Madison Square Garden for what we thought was going to be his last time there, you know, before he came back with the Wizards, which and, and pulled it off with the um, black and red pinstripe sharp as hell with the with the with the with the red, black and white ones. And he said his feet were bleeding after that game, bro. <laughs> like he said his toenails like cut into his toes and his and his socks were were fucking blood red like the jordan ones y you're playing on like a stack of ebony magazines if, if, when you wear those dudes like no art support at all Duh. after he put all those ones he may as well the god has stayed at the la quinta while he was doing a bunch of other stuff that he used to do that he would never do again right like hey look at that michael jordan driving a honda civic isn't that crazy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, like you know, I, I get the nostalgia, but bro, you know, sometimes, sometimes we have to appreciate the advancements that have been made, you know. So yes. Now with that game with the Lakers and the Pelicans, it made me sad the way it ended with Zion because I love nothing more than a dude that's like, "All oh, my back boys, let's go." And Zion decided, yes. "I'm going to go through anybody's chest that tries to get in front of me." I said a tweet last night, like, "I ain't taking that charge." You're right. I'd have been snitching if it comes no down to taking that charge from Zion. I'm snitching every time. What all do you want to know? And he was killing them, and there was nothing that they could do. And then, boom, something happened. They say it's a hamstring, but mm -hmm. it just seemed to be. You saw the frustration on his face. And I really felt bad for him and everybody else in that moment because he was doing what we asked him for. And then he had to go to the locker room. Yeah, yeah. It's I felt like that game was everything we wanted Zion to be from jump. 
right? Like he had a 40 burger, um, 11 rebounds, five assists. I think he just, he was, he really put the team on his back and it sucks that he went out that way. And that charge that Bron took, that was not a flop, bro. That grown man feet, th- those toes were in the air, dog. <laughs> like he had no control over what happened to him after that collision. That shit just, you know, kind of w- was, was just a, a, an insane example and ex- an insane exhibition of how strong Zion is. But yeah, you know, I'm someone who I've always been rude for Zion, bro. Like, you know, he's someone who I think gets a raw deal from the, the internet jokes about, you know, his weight, about his um his questionable taste in women. But, bro, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. If I was a fucking 22-year-old millionaire in New Orleans, I would be going hard with the Jambalaya and the IG baddies, too. Like, you know, who's amongst <laughs> us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, let's cut my boy some bail, bro. This is, this is though, where I feel like the Z... You got to stop that. The Z and the, the Z and the haircut. Let that go, brother. Let that go. Like you got the like big you Z only do it, man. Is Woody Harrelson once famously said? Yeah, yeah. Like you only doing that because your name start with Z, and we get it. It's not a very common sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sure Dwayne Wade loves it, for example. But I'm telling you right now, you just <laughs> might want to go ahead and let that go because was like Zion. Do he do that himself? Do his daddy do that? Because, I mean, look, I ain't really had to think about barbering that much, but that don't look like NBA-level hair country that he is receiving. Yeah. Z- Zion got an old spirit, man. Like, the shit he be wearing, I'll be like, bro, what dude who grew up in the 90s is your OG? Like, he be wearing Wu-Tang hoodies and shit and Timberlands. I'm like, bro, who is this Who, who is this 22-year-old wearing gear, wearing Wu wear in fucking 2024, right? So, so yeah, I, I think he's just, I think he's just, uh, he's just got an old soul. Like I said, he's got an OG in, in his head who's a very big influence on his, on his kind of fashion sets. <laughs> Yo, by the way, do you think anybody wanted to win a basketball game yesterday any place on earth more than that Jose Alvarado did? Oh, dog. Once 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 him and D'Lo got into that shit talking like I, I love that. You know, that whole game within the game shit. Now, I know D'Lo fucking felt incredible. You know, for, because it's 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 one thing when your team wins when you're in a shit talking debate, but it's another thing when you're the one talking shit and you're the one who's got a hand in in locking that shit up, right? Like he picked that pass off, he hit that dagger, he talked shit to the bench. I'm like, this motherfucker's on cloud nine, and we got to give D'Lo his props, man, because like there was a time when he was on the trade table just this season, and it felt like once he knew that, he turned that shit up, bro. Like he was like, look, I've been in L.A. before, I am not gonna go back to Minnesota or even New York, like. <laughs> You know, it's 80 degrees in January out here, bro. Y'all are not like, like those are great cities, but y'all are not shipping me out. And I think they for sure found their number three guy, you know, with, with D'Lo. He's mm-hmm. been incredible um, as of late. Do you know how insulted I would be to have to listen to all this from Jose Alvarado if I was D'Angelo Russell? Because look, man, D'Angelo Russell ain't going to no Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not pretending like D'Angelo Russell's one of the greatest players of all time, but he ain't no goddamn Jose Alvarado. Like, Jose Alvarado thinking that he can walk in and bump me just coming. Oh, come on, bro. I do feel like I've earned a little bit more than this. I I have made an all-star team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, like it, that. That was kind of the whole vibe from from from, from D'Angelo. I was like, bro, like you're really talking to me. Like when he got hit with that tech, like he couldn't. He was he was dumbfounded at getting hit with the tech, and also dumbfounded that Jose Alvarado was talking shit to him. It felt like, yes. it felt like he didn't understand what was going on with everything at that moment. You know. <laughs> Well, I was dumbfounded but they spent that much though. time watching it on the monitor. I just could not believe that they're wasting time in the game to really go replay that. Like, we got these refs so shook. And the misunderstanding being that every call has to be correct. You want the calls to be correct, obviously. The flow of the game is way more important. And there's no way in the world that that little back and forth merited going to check the security film, right? To go see if somebody was shoplifted on aisle five. Fuck out of here with this. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta let the boys yap a bit, bro. Stay like, especially in a high stakes game like this. You know what I'm saying? Playoff season's on the line here. You know, you're one game away from getting the boot. Like, let those boys yap. Like, it's not hurting any fucking body. Hold on, I gotta, uh, I gotta tell you something. I'm a, I'm gonna do this old school, like I'm on radio and television, and I'm gonna give people a tease that we got some breaking NBA news that I'm gonna relay to you after we run these advertisements. And I mean. I'm just stay where you at. You watching, listening to whatever it I'm is. Intrigued. It's called the right time. The NBA play in tournament kicks off this week, and there's no better time to get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. 
You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and baseball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And if you stick around for the end of the show, you'll hear picks from our producer, Sean, that could potentially help you win big. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. With the warm weather approaching, I know I can't wait to start traveling to some of my favorite vacation spots. Whether it's Hawaii or another tropical island in the Caribbean, I know I'll be exploring the best each place has to offer thanks to Viator. Traveling is all about new experiences, and Viator is the perfect app to help you do that. Viator is a website and app where you can book travel experiences, like museum tours, or get access to great restaurants in new cities. They offer everything from simple tours to extreme adventures. With over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries, there's something for everyone. Plus, Viator's travel experiences have millions of real traveler reviews, so you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. When you book a travel experience with Viator, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. Download Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences you'll remember. Do more with Viator. All right, uh, we're talking to Dragonfly Jones here, bruh. So I'm going to tell you news. Part of it's not going to surprise you. Uh, Jonte Porter Mm. has been banned for life from the NBA Mm. for being the dumbest motherfucker alive. Um, And that was his, his gambling situation with the NBA. And look, I need you to tell me if you had heard this before. I had not heard it. I see this in this paragraph from the statement from the commissioner. And this is how this man got caught. Okay, now some of you may remember a big detail of the story was that there was suspicious activity around prop bets involving Jonte Porter. And one time, the biggest wins of the day on the whole network where people prop betting on Jonte Porter. And that was when they, you know, they started thinking that shenanigans were at play. Okay. <clears throat> the league's investigation found that prior to the Raptors March 20th game, Porter disclosed confidential information about his own health status to an individual he knew to be an NBA better. Another individual with whom Porter associated and knew to be an NBA better subsequently placed an $80,000 parlay position bet with an online sports book to win $1.1 million, wagering that Porter would underperform in the March 20th game. Come on, man. Who was putting $80 million? I mean, $80,000 on Johnson. Bro. You had to have known that with this new marriage of gambling and sports that, especially in the NBA, that Silver was going to make an example of anyone who got caught with this shit. And they're not going to miss Jonte Porter at all. Like, just just a crash dummy here. Like, like, and for one, like, you don't think the sports books are going to be like, who the fuck is putting $80,000 on Jonte Porter? Right? (laughs) It's just stupid all around. (laughs) And from what I remember, um, there was like a, 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 a Reddit that he was in where he was telling kind of, you know, folks like, like, you know, if if he was going to ball out that night or whatever, it's, it's just a stupid fucking move on the, on the skids part and a a stupid fucking trail. He left too, bro. Imagine being so greedy that you think you're going to turn John Tay Porter into a million dollars. John (laughs) Tay Porter's agent doesn't think that he'll ever turn John Tay Porter into a million of his own dollars. <laughs> Nobody's going to make a million dollars off of John Tay Porter. And this guy, really, whoever it was, was just like, all right, I'm, that's that's the ultimate. I'm going to hit for this one lick, and then I'm going about my business. Yeah, yeah. What's 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 the max you think you could put on a John Tay Por- uh, Porter parlay before the sportsbook is like, wait a minute. I feel like maybe... 3500 payout is like 
it's, it's like they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, you lucked up on that. I feel like if you get into like 5,000, 10,000, people are like, okay, what the fuck is going on here? Yo, I'm trying, that's a great question what the number is, because I feel like anything over $75 and like the app should automatically send you that Michael Jordan stop get some help right get some help, like, like right? <laughs> yeah like that's immediately what you should receive when you decide that you go do this it's a, what an interesting year in the porter household right imagine being michael porter senior your one boy is the dumbest motherfucker in the whole league your other boy out here talking doing podcasts with pornographic movie stars and talking about how it's cats in the league that have gotten bored with what they used to and they out here trying the new phenomenon as many may perhaps look at such things and i just don't think this is how he thought it was gonna go when he was taking all these coaching jobs to try to get to, to, to take care of the family and get these boys into the league yeah it's it's some very interesting things in the porter household um mpj is one of the more interesting guys in the league like you know a coach's <laughs> son who's a who's homeschooled and is a holy roller and is doing podcasts with with porn stars now it's just it's a, it's, it's some very interesting occurrences going on in that house now you got a son who's been ga- uh, suspended for life for gambling on himself and throwing games like bro like what is thanksgiving gonna be like in that household like like, you know what are the conversations gonna be with those two young men i'm gonna say this about michael porter though there is no black person in america who has his bushel of views but also consistently has that fresh of a haircut everybody else Mm. that thinks and says the kinds of things that michael porter says got a fucked up box Michael Porter is the only one that's always out here. Like he competing with Jason Tatum. You know what I'm saying? Like they, yeah, they go on blow for blow out. on the haircut game. He the only one. Everybody else that thinks and talks like he does, they don't go to that barbershop. Yeah, he, he, he for sure has an edge up that we do not see that's aligned with his views <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know he, he would he would he would fool you bro like you know you see that edge up and you think that you know he's, he probably listens to future and this motherfucker is probably listening to like christian rock in his whip or whatever you know yes. so he's a very interesting dude man yo i gotta be honest you mentioned christian rock i'm gonna just throw this out here hope not to offend too many people in this world but uh i am not a religious man by any stretch But when I listen to gospel music and the organ and everything else going, like the response that I have to it, it makes me understand how people firmly believe in a God, right? Like they firmly believe that something has come and snatched and gotten inside them, right? Like it has that visceral sort of effect, man. Dog, I be listening to what they be playing at them big old white people churches, and I just don't know why that make you think about God at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just I just don't understand how it is that God would have y'all out there listening to such mediocre music. I, it, it blows my mind every time that your God is a loving God, but y'all just be like, yeah, it's kind of real cool. Nobody, like, Bro, like, yeah. hey, like, if somebody fall out to that music, you know they lying. You know they front. Yeah. You, yeah, you know, they right, bro. That should be like straight organs, no drums, no percussion, nothing. Like, and that's so wild to me. Like, how are you supposed to try to get, like, you mentioned a visceral response when you ain't got no thump, bro? You need that thump, you need that, you need that bottom there. You know what I'm saying? You need them, you need them drums. Them drums is what gets us in, in, in the black church, in the, in the, in the right. Baptist church, bro. Like, like the drummer is the star of the show, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But, but yeah, they just be in that motherfucker wilding out the organs, which is so wild to me. Yo, and I'm not even talking about like, old school like where they singing in the other language white churches right i'm talking about the one where they got like they they got the band and they playing instruments and it ain't got no yank to it whatsoever none none and i'm like (laughs) y'all like like, that uh, that you know what that is a god who never raises his voice (laughs) (laughs) a god who puts people into who puts his children in time out like but that's that (laughs) but but yeah but yeah, I'm out, bro. Yeah, it's it's just no dump at all in that music in white churches, dog. I will never get it. understand. It's like it's like new age monk chants. Like you know, you expect motherfuckers <laughs> to start making pretzels or some shit. You know. <laughs> hey man, what to talk to you about the Warriors? They lost that game to the Kings last night. And you ever had a car that you just kept trying to get a few more miles out of, a few more miles out of? It was dope in this day, right? And you just keep stretching that mm-hmm. thing out because you just don't want to pay a new car. You just don't want to pay a car note, so you keep making all these changes. But then after a while, you're like, yo, man, three different times I spent $2,000 trying to keep this $1,000 yeah. car running. I feel like they yeah. 
they was out there begging to keep Clay Thompson in them interviews last night. And I'm like, bro, did y'all watch the game? Right, right. Like, you know, that's like the perfect analogy there. It's like you get to a point where it's like, bro, I'm not putting any more money into this car. And then Clay Thompson is like the twenty five hundred dollar bill that you just got for your for your car. Where you're like, you know, I'm done here. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you, you know, but but I'm interested in the Warriors, the minds and where you stand on it, because, of course, we can talk about this season. But like, you know, the whole overarching thing, because I do think that this is I think they're done. But I think that, you know, going to this season and how they fell apart and, you know, kind of leans on everything after 2022 because 2022 was an incredible fucking championship run like that's that's a run that you know raised steph stock that's a, that that's a run that 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 gave steph, steph like another notch in his resume but since then bro it's it's just been like you know we had the dream on punch with with jordan Poole. you know we've had like you know um Kerr just not knowing what to do with these young guys and i feel like the demise of them has just been just like a perfect example of how you just can't do that dual track shit, bro. You can't have like one foot in waiting for your 22 year olds to develop while trying to win with a core of like 32 year olds, bro. If, if, if your core is 32 year old year olds, you need to lock in with that right now. Get some guys who can win with them. Now you can't worry about three or four years from now. You know what I'm saying? And I also want to say that, you know, it feels like, you know, Golden State was hesitant to part with Clay. I think that Dre is still useful there, right? I think that 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 Dre probably deserves the contract he's got. He's still useful there, but it felt like they were kind of hesitant to cut ties with Clay. And I don't ne- necessarily know if that was like just some altruism shit. Like we got to do our guy right. I think that the unique thing about Golden State is that those two, Steph, um, um, well, not Steph, Clay and Draymond, they unlock Steph in a very unique way that is very hard to replicate, right? Like, I think if there was a 26-year-old Clay out there or a 26-year-old Draymond out there who they could have got for cheap, they'd have cut those dudes loose long ago. But you just cannot replicate what those two bring to, you know, maximizing and 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 unlocking Steph. And I think that's why they've kind of been stuck in this in this weird situation. But it looks like it's, it's, it's over now, bro. I don't know what they do with Clay. I think Clay is probably down to come back for the cheap, but I don't even know if Golden State wants him now, bro. Yeah, I think, number one, you and I have one very important agreement. That two-track thing was always a bad idea. I've never thought that you could play for now and play for the future. I'm amazed that they won it in 2022. Like, I do feel like that 2022 championship was one somebody had to win, but that also meant that anybody could win it, and they were the ones who did. So I'm not saying to discount it, but that was not a great basketball team, I guess is what my point is. Andrew right. Wiggins was the second best player on a championship team. Who the fuck saw that coming? Like, you and know, he, by the way, was not really much better than we he was in the other place. Right. He just dropped it into a better situation when you expect him to be the number two or treat him like the number one pick. It was different than when you just expected him to be your fourth best player, which is what they you know basically got out of him. But they won it. And I think it was game four against Boston where I looked at Steph after one of them buckets and he did a a Hulk flex and I was like oh buddy this is over they're not going to lose another game and they did not yeah they they held on to Clay it ain't show friends man like I think that for Steph it's very important to keep those guys around and he wants that level of comfort but in the end LeBron James would have had Clay Thompson out of there a couple years ago I don't know if Clay would have stuck would have been around for the championship honestly Braun would have Braun would have made decisions would have been made He'd have shit that man out for like Cam Thompson in a couple seconds, bro. Like he, there would have been no lawyers, no loyalty no. involved there. He, yeah, but no, but yeah, it's gonna be, it's it's, gonna be out of there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we all know that dynasties end ugly, but usually not this ugly. Usually there's like a little deep playoff run, you know, not necessarily a play in loss. And bro, I. I don't blame Bob Myers for getting the fuck out. He was like, this shit is about to end ugly. And whoever, you know, whoever has the blood on their hands of this shit is going to be hated by one of the biggest fan bases in the league right now. Get me out yeah. of here. Let me get on ESPN. Perk, what's up, dog? Let's let's chop it up. Like, yeah. like Bob Myers hauled ass. He saw the writing on the wall for sure. But but the other question we got to ask is just how good is Steph Curry at this point in time? And I hate to be this guy because I've always been the like Steph skeptic and it ain't worked out for me once. Right. Like never at any point has it worked for me. But you go look at it. You can say he's just worn down. But at that age, what do you call it when somebody's worn down and at 35, 36 years old? Right. Like that's Mm -hmm. that's old. Like we're asking, like how long can you ask him to keep running around all these screens and everything else at that age with the mileage that he has on his body with all those postseasons that they played all those extra miles? How long? does he stay as a superstar like he 
shot four at a 493 field goal percentage in 23. 450 this year. That is a giant drop. That is not small, right? Some of that's about scheme. It's not all his fault. Some of that's got to be, you know, forcing stuff or whatever it is. But that's still, that's not superstar level efficiency. And that's what you've gotten out of him along with getting all that volume. So if he's not a superstar caliber player, what are we talking about? And he can still be excellent, very good without being a superstar. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I've sold my Golden State stock. I don't know if I've sold my Steph stock yet, though. There's there's still a part of me that thinks he can be one of the five or six guys in the league who could be the best player on a championship team. Um, and if he's like the second best player on a on a on a on a team, they've got a great fucking chance of winning a championship. But you know, like you said, it's you know the 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 drop off this season that we saw. It's 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 very concerning. But you know, I'm I'm someone who I still believe that Steph's game is going to age gracefully. Right? It's very low impact. There is a lot of running around screens and such that he does, but. I still believe that his whole thing is, bro, I'm going to catch this ball. I'm going to hit you with the wop, 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 you know, and and, and dot your eye. Like, I, I, I think that he's still got about two seasons left in, in the tank. That's really, really, really good, though. Let me ask you this. Let's say that he could be the best player on a championship team, which I don't think is an unfair statement to make. So how much how much other stuff are you going to have to put around? You got to give him another shooter. You got to give him some more space to work. Um, which which is why Clay was so valuable until that motherfucker right. just was out there but, looking but, like me going but what over. Are we, but, but I guess what I'm saying, what are we calling a shooter? Because when we had a shooter and it was Clay Thompson, it wasn't just a shooter. It was one of the ten best shooters of all time, right? Like, yeah. I mean, he's, I he's the second best shooter of all time in my book. Yes. Yeah, but I don't know how. Like, how much do you have to put around in order to make it happen with him in call it 2025? That's what I don't have the answer for. This time next year, he's going to be 37 years old. Whoo! That's a lot, man. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 Every, everybody ain't Bron. You know, I feel like Bron being the old man <laughs> in the club has just kind of skewed our perception on on aging a, a bit here. But yes. Yeah. It's, it's something it's something to be concerned about. But but yeah, I mean, I I mean, shit like, you know, I, I think Golden State is done and I do not think that there's any moves that they can really make unless they get a motherfucker like Giannis or Embiid, which is just not going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think those, their years of being a championship contender are over, bro. I got to say, I thought they'd been done since 2019. And I was right that they'd been done since 2019, except for that time they won a championship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little know. minor blip right there, right? But otherwise, I look very correct outside of that. They <laughs> lost in a play-in. They lost to the Lakers in the second round. They just lost in the first round of the play-in this year. I want to say it's a couple missed times. I was looking, I'm looking 100% correct about that, except for that one time that they won a championship. This is my version of Shaq's. I've won at every <laughs> level but college and pro. <laughs> right. <laughs> So 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 where where are we at with 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 Golden State? Like, are where are we at as far as eulogizing them? Because I I think this might be the repass right here, bro. I think they're done, man. I think they're done, and I think that what we need to give them credit for is they're in a very similar place to the Spurs Tim Duncan run in that very rarely does a team jump back up and win one on the back end, right? Like the Spurs won in 20, 2007 and then didn't win another one until 2014, except the difference was they popped up with Kawhi Leonard. And I don't, we didn't appreciate the impact of that addition at the time, but they popped up with one of the greatest players of all time. Like that was a significant change to yes. what they did. The Warriors basically with the same core that they had in 2015 came back and won a championship in 2022 after going down, I can't think of any other team that's ever done that in the way that they pulled it off. And that is the resilience of Steph Curry. Like to me, we could talk about these other guys and Draymond's really important and everything else, but that's a bunch of dudes that need to look at Steph Curry and thank them for everything they have. I can't believe they don't all have kids named Stephen, Steven, Stephanie, Stefan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They all need to give props where the props is due. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm 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 with you on that. And I think that like you know, I'm so talking about like the entire dynasty um, to kind of eulogize them on that. I think that the the Warriors, the, the KD era Warriors, they were the best basketball team I ever saw in my life, bro. Quite they possibly. were hands down like they might not they might have been not been the best dynasty because, you know, th uh, you know, uh, two championships there. But, you know, three championships in four years for for the, that actual Warriors squad, four championships in eight. And of course, you know, you got MJ with his six and eight or whatever. But I think that they played basketball at a, the highest level I've ever seen. And 
I think that also, you know, I think that, you know, that can possibly be debatable, but I don't know if this can be debatable. I think that it is the best dynasty build that we've perhaps ever seen in the sport, because the thing is, they built that dynasty the quote unquote right way, the way we say we want to see dynasties be built. Right. Like the, the whole, you know, um, uh, school of thought here is if you're a bottom um, team and you want to, you know, elevate to to, to, to the ranks of being a championship, you got to do uh, th- these three things. Well, right. You got to draft. Well, you got to have a competent front office who's going to make, you know, good trades and good free agency acquisitions. And you have to become like a, an attractive free agency destination. And they did all those three things, right? Like the first stage there, they drafted yeah. well, of course. You draft the best shooter of all fucking time with the seventh pick, right? He's the second best point guard of all time. And with the third point guard taken in his own draft, which is crazy as hell, be out fucking Rubio and Flynn. Um, two years later, you know, you get Clay, who, like I said, I think he's the second best shooter of all time. So, you know, the, the years progress, and now you've drafted the best backcourt of all time. The year after that, you draft Draymond with the 35th pick, who was the best defender of his era in my book. Like he's going to go down as the standard small ball five when 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 coaches are like, you know, making small ball lineups and they want a small ball five. He's going to be the fucking prototype. Right. Like a versatile defender, you know, can defend the perimeter, the posts, on ball help rotation, not a weakness at all in his uh, defensive game. And is also a QB on the offense. Right. You know, someone who especially on second chance um, on possessions where he was often the one getting the offensive rebounds and he facilitated things from there. So it's like they got an A plus on that phase of drafting. Right. You knocked it out the park. You draft Steph, you draft Clay, you draft Draymond. Then the second phase is the whole, you know, competent free office um, acquisitions where they draft Iguodala. Great fucking pickup, right? He's a great defender. And he unlocks Dre even more, right? So Dre becomes like a free safety there with with how good of a, a on-ball defender Iguodala is. You get the death line up there with, you know, Steph, Clay, Harrison, um, uh, Iguodala, and, and Dre. And you've got Livingston as well, who is like, he might not have been the best bench player you know, in the league during that era. But during the postseason, bro, that motherfucker turned into like 98 MJ. Like, like he was killing from the mid range, right? Like he maximized the the real estate that was left open there from all the spacing from, from, from Clay and Steph. And then they picked up Bogut as well, who was like just the perfect center for this squad. A dude who doesn't want touches, just going to do the dirty work, you know, clean the glass, get putbacks. And then the third phase, like I mentioned, is becoming an attractive destination of free agency. And we had summer 2016, and look who the fuck becomes available that summer, right? And you can you can for sure say that that KD going to Golden State is one of the most controversial moves. You can say it's a sucker move, but that ain't got shit to do with Golden State. That's on KD, right? If, if right. KD wants to come to your team, you sign KD to your team, right? So I always felt like they go to say built their dynasty the right way, but they were just so fucking incredible at every phase at drafting at, at, um, you know, uh, uh, free agency, um, acquisitions at, 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 you know, trades and such that it felt unfair. It felt like they were cheating, but like I said, you know, we can argue if they're the greatest dynasty ever. I think they're for sure the best basketball team ever, but I just don't think we can argue that we've never seen a better build of a dynasty than we see with golden state. I think the most interesting part of the build that gets lost is that they did it with mid lottery picks like the idea. And this is what I always said when I would talk about that fucking process and all these people that feel like tanking it out was the way to go. Ignoring the fact that you build a culture of losing around that. Steph Curry is the number seven pick. Clay Thompson, I want to say was something like the number nine pick. Harrison Barnes is the number seven pick. Clay was 11. Yep. Yeah, like all those guys, they did it with mid lottery picks and they figured it out. And so once you made the point about being attractive enough to get Kevin Durant, it's like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying about the build, because, you know, that and build seem kind of counterintuitive in a lot of ways. But it is. And and they did it. They did it under our noses when they fired Mark Jackson. Our point was, damn, what do you expect? Right? Like, come on, man. Your best players are Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. How good do you really think this team is supposed to? Oh, okay. And then they were immediately. To go from 50 to 67 wins is crazy. That is an absurd. With the same players. With a team that didn't really look terribly coached. Maybe not the best coach in the world. But they pulled that off. I agree with you that it is crazy and incredible the way that they managed to pull this off. And... I mean, once you had Durant, you got three of the 10 best shooters of all time and you figured out how to like really get out here and play defense. They were ahead of a paradigm shift. As long as three is going to be 50 percent bigger than two, having those guys out there, the math was just so tilted. It's just ridiculous. Like, I can't believe that we're even here. We're even there. Where I think that they don't get enough credit is one. 
We talk about them playing small ball, and that's not true. They play small ball like 10 minutes a game. They were always bigger at every position just about, including point guard, than the the guys that were on the other side. Klay Thompson is 6'6", 6'7", at two guard. Draymond Green is undersized but got the crazy long arms. Andrew Bogut is a tall dude. Andre Iguodala is huge. Harrison Barnes is huge. Like They were never small. They could play in a way that seems small. Even when you go get Kevin Durant and say you got Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant plays small ball five, he's seven feet tall. Right? Like, they had flipped the game up on so many different axes that nobody was ready for and then extended it for longer than I ever thought that they would be able to. Right? But yeah, it's a wrap, dog. It's a wrap. I want to get this right fast, though. Before we get done, I have to I have to throw this out here for the people. Sean, can you uh, play the video footage right fast? Hey, no, this shit is really funny because I'm going to tell you, I was like battling against nerds is like sitting in a class. And you watching all the nerds put together their best science project to present to the class. Man, y'all can have that shit. I ain't with that shit. Nigga, your nose fake. Your stomach fake. You don't write raps. Your biggest homies in foreclosure. Come on, man. Go buy all them niggas that's living with each other a big mansion and put the, the, the BBL Drizzy logo on the gates. Man, feed them niggas, man. Come on, man. Do that shit, man. And y'all need to pray for Drake and tell them, Park that old ass plane. It's a 1978 cargo jet. People gave it to him free for promo. And I ain't hating, but be safe, my nigga. If something was to happen to you and I couldn't tell you this, be safe. And anybody getting on it, be safe, man. Wear your seat belts and make sure the oxygen things in there because that shit was just for luggage. It wasn't for human beings. Okay, so that's, that's Rick means. Ross. I, I had never been to Rick Ross's Instagram account. I didn't realize how much Drake trolling that he is doing over there. We just decided to play the one video. And for those of you who are listening and not watching, he's doing that wearing a Rolex t-shirt and a Rolex hat. And I just want to throw it out there. I've bought a Rolex before. They didn't tell me they had t-shirts and hats. If they had told me they had t-shirts and hats, I can't lie. I'd probably have one on every goddamn show yeah. that we do right here. And yeah. I would have to take this watch off and put the Rolex on just to match but dude what a time where he is insulting Drake for having a hand me down old private jet and I looked it up it's not a 78 but it is a 96 but the man is also right it is a a he got it from a company called Cargo Jet. He talk about that man's jet (laughs) like it's a U-Haul he talk about that man's jet like it go like this like it's a Clydesdale (laughs) the name of the jet company being cargo jet like how much more explicit can you be with the fact that it is a cargo jet god damn <laughs> like i never thought i would give a fuck about you know private jet beefs but rose is making this shit so entertaining that motherfucker is funny look look that's what i love the most about this drake and Ross beef it's like i was like bro drake i think drake is a funny guy and I and I think that he's finally gotten into a beef for the motherfucker who's just as hilarious because that motherfucker. Look, R- Rose well, has told you himself by his own admission, like, bro, I grew up fat, poor and ugly in the slums of Miami. Like that man was born. He was weathered by this shit. That motherfucker was born into the jokes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what he does. And he has been just clowning Drake so, so efficiently, bro. Like, we got to understand this is a motherfucker who went through 50 cent and survived. You know what I'm saying? So. So, yeah, I, I, I think Drake might be a little over his head with the jokes here but I'll, i'm loving every minute of it i i don't want to engage in a beef with someone who's really good at rap and really funny like poor Birdman yeah. is just, I mean, he, he he comes at Birdman all the time but Birdman catching even more like now Birdman's foreclosure is fodder for rick rick said he said man you big uh, you know say ain't none of my people in foreclosure Right. He said, he's like, if you got as much money as you say, there's a $40 million, 40 million house on Indian Creek. There's one for 50 on Star Island. Come on, BBL Driss. And he just keeps calling him these terrible. No, now he was calling a white boy in that video. He just so casually yeah. keeps calling him these names that I know are killing Drake inside. Killing him. He is. Yes, he is. He is very committed to the to the bit. And I know that white boy shit hurts Drake because we saw him post the message from his alleged mom. You know, that might have been some shit he said to himself. But I know that white boy shit is is fucking killing him because he's someone who very much, um, you know, wants to be accepted by like, you know, you, you know, he's someone who who 
if there's a new hot rapper out of Atlanta or Memphis, like he's like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm appreciate. I'm, I'm feeling your, your wave. I'm trying to hop on. I'm trying to be down with you. Like he's someone who very much wants to be accepted as, 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 as one of the guys in this rap shit. And to be called a white boy, that's just like the implication. I like, bro, we will never accept you. Right. Like that's the implication there. I mean, that's push never grew. Did what didn't grow full. Cause it wouldn't nap enough. When a nap enough, yeah. <laughs> they know, they know that's his weak spot, and they are going for it. I just, I mean, yes, they are turning that. Score. I mean, we need a new song at some point. I'm not really here for this. I'll tell you, the bad look for Drake is this though. He is focusing all his energy at the dude who doesn't rap. At Metro, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Like you know, he had Metro with shut the fuck up and make some drums, like which is hilarious, but. <laughs> And then the whole thing is that puts that put, that puts Metro in a corner because like how can as you as a producer how can you reply to that you gonna make an angry beat like you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> like, like you gonna go Manny Fresh at the end of rich niggas on this dude or something like there's no way a producer can really come back from that so yeah it does feel like you know he's picking on someone who's not gonna rap back at him but he's also going at, at Rose who you know gave him a bit of a heater with that um champagne moment shit so yeah he did but since then he's been sending drummers to Magic City for Metro Boomin and putting out the stuff out there for Metro Boomin. And the truth is this, all right? I think you and I both understand this. You have to pick a producer carefully that you're going to antagonize like this because since rapping isn't an option, that takes shooting to the top of the list a lot faster. (laughs) Or if not shooting, just up on running. They go run up on you. Because I don't yeah. have the option of rapping. Like, we just go have to scrap it out. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because I do not think he would have tried, like, Young Chop like this. You know, homie out of Chicago who produced all that drill shit for them boys. Nope. I don't think he'd have tried nope. Young Chop like he tried Metro Boomin. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's interesting. I will say this. The most interesting thing about this beef is the shots that are being sent. Bro, y'all are talking about yourselves. Like the cognitive dissonance here is so entertaining. Like I don't give a fuck about consistency or or, or, or contradiction in this rap shit. I just want to see motherfuckers swing on each other, and we're getting that, thank God. But it's like Drake. You know, you sent shots at Kendrick talking about how he's done fluffy pop songs. Like, bro, like are, are we looking in the mirror here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like you sent shots at Kendrick saying he's being extorted. Like you don't got Birdman and Jay Prince in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? And and then you got Ross calling Drake the police. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> What do we do? Well, you know, correctional officer of uh, uh, Rose call it Drake the police. That's what I was about to say. It's been so long that we have forgotten that there are like three or four different levels on which we were not trying to hear this Rick Ross thing. But to be fair to Rick Ross, mm-hmm. Rick Ross won us over the best way through sheer volume of quality. He yes. wrapped his way out of every allegation. He beat them all just yes. by being really good at rapping and with an amazing ear for beats. And we let all the rest of this stuff slide that really we was not letting slide 10 years ago. Like we, we had some real conundra yeah. about how we was dealing with Rick Ross. And now he is the Avenger for what's right in the world. Yeah. 50, 50 was on his head after those CO pictures. He dropped deep in the rap. He opened it with Mafia Music, which I think is the greatest song in his discography as far as just straight rapping. He rapped for like three minutes straight on that. He gave 51 bar on that. And that shit ended the beef for me and I think a lot of people when when there was, you know, allegations that 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 50 had burned down his baby mama's house and, and, and shit. And he was like, bring your baby mama house down. <laughs> and you gotta buy her another don't forget the gas can jealous stupid motherfucker like I was like okay we're done here <laughs> you know what I'm saying I was like that's it that's it bro and, 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 he, and he sandwiched that shit in like I said between three minutes of him just going crazy just rapping his ass off on an incredible beat and the album was incredible we were like okay I think we can let that seal shit slide because deep in the rap was just undeniable bro <laughs> what about the whole stupid mother there was another Rick Ross that's the thing. There was another Rick Ross. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Freeway Rick. That, like, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot going on here, there's guys. A, there's a lot there's here. A lot. There's, a, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And also, another thing is Drake and Ross going at it. It's like two dudes who have like just two of the most infamous 
pictures attached to their name in rap history, right? Like you got the fucking blackface yes. picture with Drake, which is just so wild. Six years, six years later, and every time I see it, I am just still in awe. Like this really happened, bro. Like this, really, this I and I say this with with no exaggeration. I think that is the wildest picture attached to any rap icon in rap history, bro. I, I don't think there's anything you can touch. And the funny shit is, bro, me, me and you, we're the same age. We grew up in the era where that Dr. Dre picture of him in the stethoscope and a little tight white yes. shirt, like that was a, a big fucking yes. deal. I've gone back and looked at that and be like, bro, what was the, why were we tripping off this? I'm like, Gunna has like eight shirts like this in his closet right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's a different yeah. era, but but yeah, it's, th- th- that, that blackface picture is something I will never be able to wrap my head around, bro. No one as good as Drake who actually had a pretty noteworthy offering in a beef has ever lost a beef more decisively than he lost that one to push and there was just nothing that he could do because it was just like i'm trying to like it's like that game six when lebron went for like 45 12 and 12 against the celtics yes. it didn't matter what y'all was gonna do man like like he came out here with the glow he this wow what an angry man he hated he hates him so much i just can't believe that drake didn't understand that these i think that was drake's problem he thought these dudes liked him. Yeah. He they hate your guts. Like his, That's what we're learning. Yeah, they yeah, hate his, your guts. <laughs> yeah, his his shots at, at Pusha T were like, man, you don't really sell drugs. You're actually a nice guy. Pusha came back <laughs> like, your mom is a loser, motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, your mom is a loser and your best friend is on his deathbed. Like, we are not playing games here, bro. <laughs> Drake totally, totally misread that shit. I have never hated anyone <laughs> enough to, to tell them that their mom is a loser, bro. And I have hated it's a few like motherfuckers. Can, but I've never hated like someone who to tell mom, them their mother is a loser. You can call your mom any time of day or night. She's alone. <laughs> She's free. Say God, your said mom his dad wore monkey suits. suits. No, I said his yeah. daddy. God, I mean, he Steve got to his Harvey girl. <laughs> Not the last, well, we got to the so point where Steve... We got to the point where Steve Harvey addressed necessary. this shit. It was so in yeah, that yeah, too. But it, the thing about his mom was so unnecessary. She she had nothing to do with this. And Push was just like, ah, so you talk about my girl, huh? Okay, I'll talk about your whole family tree. <laughs> he talked about talked about his mama, talked about his dad, talked about his baby mama. Didn't necessarily talk about his kid, but revealed his kid to us. Like just just scorched earth, bro. Just listen, the tick, more I listen tick, to the story of Adidon, that the higher it rises in my like all-time diss track range. It's like like it might be top three, dog. Like it's on that. It tier. is. Like it's it's just it's just it's it's an incredible evisceration. It's just it's just a perfect diss track. No way around it. Tick tick tick. <laughs> I can't believe that. My jaw my jaw literally dropped when I heard that. My jaw literally <laughs> dropped, which is why. <laughs> I want to tell the people something, man. Me and Bo, we, we're homies, right? We've been homies for shit, like 15 years, like Morning Jones alumni here and yeah. shit. When J. Cole apologized, my dog texted me at like 8 a.m. and said, Cole is dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Cole is dead to me. I'm like, 8 in the morning, right? I'm up. I'm working. I text my homie back. I thought the shit was hilarious. I'm like, bro, I ain't never seen no shit like that. Laugh, cry, face emoji. Bo hits me back. You don't understand. I am frustrated. Like, frustrated in all caps. My dude oh, was furious, hot. Furious. And furious. Yeah, furious. Yeah. Yeah. You were you were really, really upset with that J. Cole shit. And the, and the, the shit was hilarious to me, right? I was of the part that I had just never seen a motherfucker make a diss track and then just walk that shit back. Like, ah, oh, man, what the fuck was I doing? And it wasn't even no harsh shit say. You didn't cross any lines. You just said the motherfucker's music was boring and he's overrated. Like, that was hilarious to me that a motherfucker hopped out there and did the whole, you know, Jebediah uh simpson meme where he walks in and sees bart working the door walks back out <laughs> like that was that was it. i found the humor in this shit and my dog bo was upset bro dog i can't even lie i was going back in the text because i heard you say that and i was like that's not how it went nope monday that's 8 exactly 10 a.m cold dead to beat <laughs> um that is what it says um 10 18 a.m <laughs> I am over here furious with furious in all caps. Yep, that happened. <laughs> that yeah, happened. I, hey, I ain't gonna tell no lies, dog. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. I, yeah, so, I just so, so, didn't so, so remember where? it that way. That was all. That was all. I just didn't remember it that way, but that's exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Where, where are you at with, with, with Cole right now? Because I think Cole signed up for a slap back, um, slap box match. And he saw these motherfuckers are shooting and he like, you know, back uh, down. Yeah, so nah. I think people understand it now a bit, you know? 
called called decided that ain't the first time somebody's called me a punk and it won't be the last and i'm just gonna have to take this sometimes these sometimes there are no good choices right like, like, like he looked around yeah, him and just yeah. like there are there are sometimes you just sometimes you're gonna have to be that guy and it was him but that dragonfly jones check out the jenkins and jones podcast on the volume available where all fine podcasts are sold long live the morning jones my man thank you i appreciate you yes sir yes sir sean you got prize picks for the people i sure do Bo. we got some more playoff playing games this time on the east uh, eastern conference trey young 22 and a half we'll take more joel Embiid, 47 and a half points rebounds and assists we'll take more Kobe White, nine and a half rebounds and assists. We'll take more. Hopefully, John Tay Porter can get into the mix now that he has a lot of free time. Hey, man. Hey, John Tay Porter, like, hey, man, you, you, got, a, you got the app. You got the app. You got any okay, promo cool. money for me? Yeah, yeah. Come on over here. Come on over here. But hey, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on the right time. Uh, we do this three times a week. Sean, you handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Remember, follow the right time. Rate us, review us, subscribe, like, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater and we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. Take it easy.